Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. Today we have a fun thing to explore. We're gonna look at how to create buttons and pop-up boxes in Canvas. Now the buttons come in various colors and sizes and some of them have interactions. So if you hover over, then they might change property or if you click on them, then they might change. And we'll also look at how to have the button clickable so that when you click on it, then the pop-up box appears and how you can put content inside that pop-up box. You can also create buttons that take you to different places in the course, such as a module or a separate website outside of Canvas. Buttons are great for navigation, and they're also good for the aesthetic appeal of your course. Now you have access to this page that I'm working on. You can find the link to this page in the description below. At the top here, I have some code, and this is an anchor, so you'd be hyperlinking text. This is the text that you would be hyperlinking, which is the text that would appear right inside your button and you're gonna add a class to your button. And so the classes you're looking for is for one BTN, and that's calling on Canvas's CSS and saying, okay, this is going to be a button. And then you're gonna to want to define how large is your button. And I have various examples here of the class button mini, as well as button small, button group, and then button large. Chances are you're going to be using button large for your button size. And then you want to define the color of your button. So button-info would be just the normal button. This is a dark blue button with white text. Now you can see some other color classes here. I have button primary, button warning, danger, success. Those would be blue, orange, red, green. And finally at the bottom here, I have some unique buttons. So one is button link. This looks like just a hyperlink, but when you click on it, you can see that it actually is a button. And there's a unique one called button beta, and what it is is it creates this gray button and then it puts this beta sticker on the side. And you can actually put the button beta on any color. So I could have this beta on top of primary. In that case, I would have button large, button primary, the button, the BTN, and then I would also put BTN dash beta and that would throw this beta thing on the side. So that might be something if you're trying something new in your class or you want your students to help you test something, then you could throw this beta image onto one of your buttons. And finally, we have these buttons, button publish, button published, and button unpublish. So to create these buttons, you're gonna to need to go into the HTML editor of the page or assignment that you're editing. And I'll show you right here that buttons on the rich content editor don't look that great. They just look like hyperlinked text. And so I can't distinguish these one from another. So you probably want to have the same buttons on your page. You're not gonna to want to mix and match like I've done on this page. So now I'll hop over to the HTML editor. Now here I can see the groups of buttons that I created. Here's those mini buttons. It's all just the same button. Here are my small ones, my group, my large. And again, probably large is going to be the common button that you're going to use. Now if I were to take this button, the only thing that's missing is what happens when you click on the button. In that case, I would want to have an href and I'd want to determine where do you go. That could be a website, it could be a mail to, as in they click on the button and it starts drafting an email that they send to you or to somebody, or it could be a place within the Canvas course. Now you can see these buttons here, these are the color examples. I put them within a paragraph and then I center aligned the text. So that way all the buttons are centered, as opposed to all of these up top, they're all aligned to the left. And finally, let's look at the buttons that I have at the very bottom of my page. So these buttons are all large, they're regular, as in btn-info, and then that btn class. I decided to put a margin around my buttons, just four pixels, so that gives it a little bit of margin around the outsides. And then I have two types of hrefs. And so now we're gonna talk about the difference between a pop-up window and hyperlinking to a different place in the course. So if I look at the modules and syllabus buttons that are right here, I have the anchor and the same class, the same margin, and then I have a link that takes them to the modules page within my course. All of this data right here, I can delete that. Canvas adds that automatically whenever I save the page. But in essence, this is my href. One takes the user to the modules page and the other takes the user to the assignments page and the, the syllabus page within the course. And then I name those modules and syllabus. This href could take the users anywhere, such as a website you would just put the URL right there. Now for the pop-ups, I did something different. I actually refer to a place on this page and it's hidden from the students unless they click on the link. And I called my two hrefs hashtag prof for professor and hashtag help. And I can call those whatever I want. 
And then at the bottom of the page, I have a div and I call the div ID equals prof. And then I have another one down here called help. And so essentially what I'm saying is that when you click on this button that's hyperlinked, then I want to display this content right here. And so the div has an ID, it has to match the hyperlink that I used. And then I have this class called enhanceable underscore content space dialogue. And the rest of this is just styling. I have a paragraph, I have an image. I put the image as a width of 150 pixels. I have my name, it's in bold. I have a hyperlink right here. When they click on the link, which is Sean at howtocanvas.com, then there's a mail to, and it'll draft an email message. And then I close out the div. So this is the div, this is the pop-up box that will appear when they click on that button. Everything between div with the ID of prof, with a class of enhanceable underscore content and a class of dialogue, and then all of the content between the closing div. My other box is similar. I have a div, different ID. This one says help because that's what I defined up here. I want to take them to the help section. I have the same classes and then I just put different content. I put some text, I put an image, I put some hyperlinks. And so then when I hop back over here, that's what's happening. Here's all of the content that I just showed you. I have a picture, I have some text, and then when you click on this, then it starts drafting an email. I determined in the code that I want the email to be sent to this email address, and I even started typing a message for the students that they can just go on. You can put a subject, you can put CCs and even BCCs, whatever content you'd like. So I close that out. We'll look at the help again. Help has some text. This is bolded. I have a picture. I have more text, and some of the text is hyperlinked. Now the last thing I'll show you is pretty interesting. You can put icons inside your button as well. And if you go to instructure.design, you can see the iconography that's included within the canvas styling. So you have things like an address book, the announcement icon, analytics. So let's suppose I wanted to take one of these and put it in my button. I'm gonna go with this. It looks like a picture that's being edited. And so what I'm gonna note is that this icon is called annotate. I'm gonna hop over here. Let's put that annotate icon within one of these buttons. So I'm gonna go over to edit page. I'm gonna go into the HTML editor and I'm just gonna add this to one of our buttons. You would add it right here in the class and how you do that is you go icon dash and then you type in the name of the icon. So in this case, it was annotate. Just for fun, let's look at a few different icons and add a different icon to each button. We have admin dash tools, we have assignment, there's a chat. I like this cloud dash download icon. So let's add a few of those. I'm gonna go icon, maybe analytics, cloud dash download. And one that I think is actually kind of fun is called GitHub. Let's go ahead and save that and see what that looks like. And so that's pretty fun. And of course you would change the text that's inside the button to be whatever text you want that button to be, whether it's assignments or analytics or download. In fact, that could be an interesting button right there. Download, and then you can put uh, download the syllabus or something, and you can link it instead of to a web page or a pop-up, you can link it to a document in your class files. And so then they would download that document. So to recap, buttons are basically just hyperlinks, but they're decorated hyperlinks. Sometimes they're interactive in that the color changes as you hover over it. It's a clickable link where you click on it, it takes you to either a web page or a pop-up box where you can download something. And what you'll want to determine is the size of your button as well as the color of the button. And then what happens when you click on the button. And if you want to get fancy, you'll add an icon inside your button. Buttons can be great for navigation and they can add interactivity to your course. If you want to copy the code for these buttons, then visit the website howtocanvas.com and there you'll find the blog posts for this video as well as for other videos that I've created. Go ahead and subscribe and tell all of your colleagues to subscribe to this channel so you can get your weekly Canvas tips and tricks. And feel free to visit How to Canvas on social media. If you have any tips and tricks that you'd like me to explore, then go ahead and leave your suggestions in the comment box below. And I'm definitely willing to explore those topics with you. Have fun with this and happy teaching and learning.